old presentation where we will explain how to get away into Miss Clark's infamous dictionary. The word we are going to put into Miss Clark's infamous dictionary is Eggle Nuffle. <laughs> the meaning of Eggle Nuffle is confusion and annoyance, which relates to the actual word which we were confused by. Here are some examples of how to use the word Eggle Nuffle. Go left. Go right. Go forward. I am so Eggle Nuffle. <laughs> <laughs> At the English department at Manor College of Technology in Hartlepool, students are encouraged to get involved with their learning. You're not going to engage kids if you just stand at the front and talk in a monotone, and, and there has to be that, that sort of I don't know, it's flamboyance or drama or whatever, however you like to put it. It's got to be lively. And when I think back to the, the way I was taught English, I'm amazed I ever became an English teacher because it was dull. And I think anybody who comes to this school and gets taught English certainly couldn't say it was dull. The school's in an economically and socially deprived area, with above average numbers of free school meals and special educational needs. Enthusing pupils to learn can be tough, so teachers welcome the creative flexibility of the new curriculum. Learning objectives for today, then, to show our skills of writing to argue through drama. Can somebody tell me who the man with the yellow face is? Go on, Robin. He's like good looking at first, and then these boys they drop like a concrete block on the train, and then he ends up like with third degree burns. Excellent, yeah, he ends up with third degree burns. We started off looking at The Man with the Yellow Face, which is a short story by Anthony Horowitz. Although it's a critical reading unit, I like to not just focus on the reading elements, I like to bring the writing elements in as well. And one of the writing triplets is writing to argue. So I brought that in and I thought, well, well what, what's the best way of showing that you can argue? And I thought, well, a courtroom okay. drama. And then I thought, well, well, how could I maybe put any characters in that courtroom drama scenario? And I thought, oh, obviously the boys. So I thought, they did really well with it. If we can just welcome our defendants, we have Peter and Connor. If the defence would like to stand forward and please explain the case. Last week there was a bad case as Simon was on his way back from holiday with his auntie and uncle and he was badly injured in the case. But in my, in my defence I think this was an accident and these in these were did not mean to do it. All right. Obviously, I do a lot of guided learning, but I want them to be able to do it themselves. And this is one of the reasons I got this argument, because they'd actually come up with the arguments by themselves, then as pairs, then as groups. And I thought it's taken on other people's opinions and being able to work with them. Because I don't want them to become these kind of the learners that just kind of accept what you say. I want them to start arguing. I want them to start challenging other people's points of view so they can move forward themselves with the learning. If you want to go out with your mates somewhere, you don't go to a train track. Yeah, well, they, they could have been a poor family though, so they couldn't have, might have not afford a bus to get there or anything. Maybe there was nowhere else oh, to go. Maybe they were just trapped in the train track. train track. I understand what you're saying, and I realise that obviously I understand that there isn't very much for young people to be doing. But then when they actually get there, why did they do that? Does anyone ever, does anyone want to ask actually the defendants in the first place, well, why? Why did they want to do that? Why did you decide to throw concrete on the train track? We were crossing the bridge and we started walking. We seen this concrete block. We thought it would have been dangerous and we didn't know that the train track was still used so that we threw it on the train track. So now what we're saying is that he was protecting other people that might go along that road. By moving those blocks, he was protecting people. And it's just a horrible, horrible accident for this to have happened. I think the new curriculum has given us more of a leeway to kind of be more creative. I found it's far more exciting and they're, they're getting more out of it. I feel like this, today's lesson for the year seven, for example, they've shown the writing to argue. They've shown things that some of my year 11s last year couldn't have done right. because they've actually had a chance to get up and do it. The jury, if you would like to speak to each other and quickly come up with a decision. If they left it in the middle of the road, then it would have killed loads more people. Lauren, please. I think they're not guilty because they could have harmed more people. Thank you. Well done. I'm impressed with the way you have argued. And well done to the defence. Yeah. Well done. Reading and writing were always big parts of Key Stage 3. Speaking and listening has never been formally assessed in Key Stage 3 or in Key Stage 2. Uh, and to that end, I think, in a lot of schools, it was probably neglected. We identified it as a weakness when we came here. So it's always been part of our plan to try and develop the kids' skills in that area. I think we are noticing a big change. The insistence on a more creative and more different approach to teaching is encouraging that. As 
you can see, came in here this morning and this was in the middle of my room. I want you to help me find out why he's there, how he ended up in my room and exactly why he's ended up in this sorry still. Anybody have any ideas why it might be there? The lesson was based on the writing triplet, writing to imagine, explore and entertain. A lot of students at this school seem to struggle with writing. They seem to think that they've got an idea in their heads, but they're not quite sure how to put it down on paper. So the reason why I had the body in the middle of the room and the props situated around the room was because they instantly forgot about writing and they started focusing on what they were doing and why they were doing it. And the writing just flowed naturally after that. The first piece of evidence that I found today was this ace card. I'm going to give you one minute now to think about what story might this card be able to tell us. Off you go. So the card must have been in his pocket. And then give him a toy. They like killed him for some reason. Right, excellent. As I'm walking around this room, I'm hearing some fantastic ideas from you, which is brilliant. Right, I'm going to quickly whiz around the group, and I just want you to tell me what you have inferred from this ace card. Okay, this group first. He's a gambler and he's trying to the poker gang thing, and he owes people money. Okay, excellent. This person, we don't know whether it's a man or a woman, could be involved in gambling of some sort, okay? And he could owe some people some money. Excellent, well done. Boys over in the corner? The, the patterns on the ears, it could be like a secret code. Ooh, excellent. So the pattern on the ace card, it could be a secret code of some kind. Ross, would you like to develop that? Yes. And like, it'll rep represent like a gang. And then like magic, cause like, you know, like magicians use like cards. So uh -huh. like, it might yeah. be like some yeah. magic. Excellent. Just from that small ace card, you have inferred and used your imaginations, okay? So you've already started to hit that assessment focus. Well done. I definitely think that writing is easier to teach when you have a more creative element to your lesson. I find that when I was at school, there wasn't a lot of creativity within some of my lessons. Luckily for me, I was a good writer, so that didn't kind of, I didn't stumble across that, but not all children are like that. So you've got to make sure that your lessons are engaging, they're interesting, they're thought provoking. Otherwise, we're never going to get the children to write. So it's essential that we kind of give them the stimulus for them to be able to go away and to feel confident and comfortable about writing. You have 15 minutes to plan an imaginative story around your piece of evidence. You need to do this using this investigation report, okay? Could have been poisons or something. Could have been bed. Or your poison bed. Bed. It Could have been all the restaurants. Well, it might have nothing to do with the ace card. Remember, that could just be a piece of evidence that fell out of his pocket. This could be a completely different story. Use your imaginations. Would you like to explain to the rest of the group what your evidence is? It looks like it's got bad poisoning because it's reserved for A.F. Scarlet. And the poison was reserved for Okay, so we've got a rather spooky looking goblet. And next to the goblet, we found this reserved sign. So we know what the boards have inferred, that this sign was obviously reserved for whoever was sitting there and whoever the murderer was wanted to make sure that this person got this drink. Okay, excellent. Girls over there? We found a rose and it has a little note attached to it saying, tonight, 9pm, the ferry is be there. And it has a kiss on the back. And we thought the man who got killed might have been having an affair with you. And then he... His, wa his wife was Luffy, so and she found out that he was having an affair, so instead of talking to him about it, she killed him. And because she worked in the school as well, she put him in your classroom because you were the one having an affair with him. Excellent. A lot of inference done there. And then I do feel supported by the new curriculum, but also I think it takes a lot of initiative and a lot of personal thinking about what you're going to do about the lessons. And the curriculum is there as a framework, but you need to be able to kind of think out of the box and think what is going to engage these children, what is going to help these children write, because if I don't have that ability, how do I expect those children to write? Right, today our learning objective is to identify and create methods of persuasive presentation. We're going to do a board run on persuasive language. Who can tell me the two rules of a board run? Hands up. Ben? Don't run. Don't run is one. And Sadie? Don't throw the pen. Don't throw the pen. What happens if you run or throw the pen? David? Get your word rubbed up. You get your word rubbed up. The lessons were a series of lessons focused around the writing triplet, writing to persuade, argue and advise. And what the whole context of these lessons were, each student in their group had to come up with a word. 
which they felt should go into the dictionary. And the whole point of it was they had to create a persuasive pitch to persuade the rest of the audience to vote for their word. If you think a group's pitch could have been improved, so if they didn't use all of the rhetorical devices, you can say they should have used more rhetorical devices to involve the audience, for example, rhetorical questions. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. This year, we've changed the schemes of work to obviously take into the new curriculum, and we've got a lot more speaking and listening activities. We've got a lot more higher order thinking skills, debates and discussions, which I think all of the students have really engaged with. I think they're more confident and I think they really like to be challenged and I think the new curriculum's enabled us to bring that in. It's not as structured, it's not as mechanical. You can bring your own personality and inject your own enthusiasm into it. Did you know that 8% of people use the word hello? I mean, hello, how boring. <laughs> Our new word is amazing, fantastic and brilliant. It's singable. These are some examples of how a word can be used. Gangsters. Zigabong dog. <laughs> what does that mean, dog? <laughs> Hello, dog. <laughs> does it really dog? Yeah, dog, like, hello, dog. Yeah. Zigabong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what persuasive and entertaining devices did the group use? Emma. Um. Opinion is fact. Opinion is fact. Good. Mm -hmm. Melissa? Emotive language. Emotive language. Fantastic. Rachel? Humour. Humour throughout. Yeah. Jenny? Role play. And that really worked in entertaining the audience throughout. I think everybody would agree. They were assessing each other. And I think they kind of just viewed it as, oh, yeah, that was that technique, so I can tick that off. But the higher order thinking skills of being able to listen actively to a group presenting a pitch and then being able to pick out the key persuasive details because that's quite difficult to transfer those persuasive techniques into your own writing. So it's the transition of it all. So they can now confidently pick out and subtly use those techniques. Drum roll, guys. In first place, with an amazing, wait for it, 17 votes, is Ben's group. your poster and I will put it in my dictionary. Put your hand up if you would now feel more confident if I said right tomorrow we are going to write a persuasive letter. Put your hand up if you'd feel more confident. Awesome. People have hidden behind the old cliche that you can't teach an old dog new tricks for far too long. Um, if, if a school is going to fulfil its potential it has to look at every way possible of doing it and just because you've been doing something really well and really effectively the same way for 20 years doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be able to do it for the next 20. <laughs>